Hey everyone, Bill Lethman here for MoneyEvolution.com. In today's video blog, I'm gonna be talking about what I believe to be five of the biggest mistakes people sometimes make with their 401k. So mistake number one is not contributing enough. And this kind of falls into two different categories. Uh, number one is not contributing enough to at least get the full company match. And I think this is a really big deal. In fact, I've talked about it here on the blog several times, but make sure you're contributing at least enough to your 401k to get that match. But you also wanna look at too and plan how much money you think you're gonna need for your retirement. And I see people all the time that just simply are not putting enough money into their 401k or into other investments to get them where they need to be for their retirement. They're only putting in the 5% for their company match because they don't see any benefit in putting anything more than that. So understand how much you're putting in and if it's gonna be enough for you to reach your retirement goals. Uh, mistake number two is trusting target date funds. Now I think there's probably a lot of advantages that target date funds have. Uh, they're kind of a hands-off approach to investing money for your retirement, but you really wanna take some time and understand what's going on inside these target date funds. And what I think you need to know is what is the allocation? Uh, primarily, what's the allocation uh, between stocks and bonds? And if you're a younger investor, you may find that the typical target date fund that may be part of these 401k plans has way too much money in bonds. And maybe you should be putting more money into stocks and more growth types of investments because you have so much time on your side. Um, we also see as people get closer to retirement, some of these target date funds uh, don't really shift uh, as much as what we think is necessary over into more conservative parts of the portfolio. So you may be just about to retire and you may find that the target date fund option that you have money in has sometimes 60, 70, you know, 80% of the portfolio or more into riskier stocks and, and other types of investments that could see a drop if the financial markets work against you. So understand how your money is being invested in those target date funds. Uh, the third thing I wanna talk about is um, investing too conservatively if you're a younger investor. Uh, and again, I think if you've got more time on your side, uh, my belief is that you should have a higher percentage of your portfolio invested in stocks. Uh, some people might be a little bit worried about that. They might think that uh, even though they're younger, that maybe they should have still a little bit more diversification. Well, one of the things that is very nice about the 401k is it lends very well to an investment concept known as dollar cost averaging. Uh, because you're contributing money to your 401k plan on a pretty regular basis, usually with every paycheck, uh, which is at least probably once a month or more for most people, um, you're getting uh, what's known as time diversification. Uh, you're putting money in uh, to the market as the market's rolling through its ups and downs. And a good example of this is if we take a look at what is probably one of the worst 10 year time periods ever for the stock market. And that's the period from January 1st, uh, 2000 through December 31st, 2009. Uh, if you had $100,000 invested in the S&P 500, uh, by the end of that 10 year time period, your $100,000 investment would have gone down to $90,364. Uh, so about 10% less. And in addition to that, you would have seen twice where your portfolio would have been down you know, 30, 40, sometimes 50%, uh, depending on when you're looking at that particular account. Uh, we look at that same period of time and we look at kind of a dollar cost averaging example. If you were say contributing $1,000 a month to like a 401k or some other investment plan and you did that consistently as the market was going through those drops and recoveries, uh, you would have contributed of course $120,000 over that 10 year time period. And by the end of the 10 years, your $100,000 would have been up slightly to $128,966. So you took one of the worst time periods ever and it wasn't the greatest gain in the world, but it wasn't bad either. Now keep in mind, obviously dollar cost averaging doesn't prevent you from losing money and it's not a guaranteed strategy, but it is a way for you to kind of smooth out some of the ups and downs of the financial markets. Um, Mistake number four is not moving to a more conservative asset allocation as you approach retirement. So just as we talked about, I think some people that are younger need to have more money invested in stocks. I think too many people as they approach retirement leave too much money in stocks. And think about all the people, you may know some that were either thinking about retiring or planning to retire right around that 2008 financial meltdown. How many of those people had to change their retirement plans or delay their retirement because they saw a significant drop in their portfolio. So we usually recommend for people to 
really start thinking about shifting that asset allocation about five years out away from retirement and start thinking about putting more money into safer investment options and getting that money out of those stocks and, and growthier types of investments. And then finally, the fifth mistake is not properly uh, looking at the differences between the Roth option and the traditional option. So obviously because the traditional investment option has been around the longest, uh, I think a lot of people like the fact that that money comes out of their paycheck before it even gets taxed. Uh, so they've just stuck with that traditional option. But I think more people could benefit by at least looking at the Roth or maybe having a portion of their investment going into their 401k into the Roth option because uh, I believe right now and if we look at historical records we're actually in a relatively low period of taxation so uh, if, in, if taxes do go up in the future um, that could lend very well to a Roth option and I think a lot of people have just uh, made this decision without really putting a lot of thought into it so uh, if that's the case for you take a look at uh, the Roth and maybe consider that as part of your 401k savings. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Five mistakes that you could be making on your 401k. Uh, again, if you're watching this video any place other than our blog at moneyevolution.com, head over there, check it out. We've got other articles and videos uh, to help you plan for your retirement. Thanks, and I'll see you in my next video.